Well, today marks a solemn anniversary in this nation's history. 60 years ago today, Emmett Till's body was discovered in the Tallahatchie River in Mississippi. He had been kidnapped three days before. And today, members of Till's family marked this day by laying flowers at his grave and that of his mother, Mamie Till Mobley. Both are laid to rest at Burr Oak Cemetery in Alsip. The National Park Service also had a part today as well. That's because this year, the site of Till's funeral in Chicago and the location where Emmett Till's body was found were designated as national monuments. Now, Marion, about a year ago, you went down to Mississippi as part of your reporting on Emmett Till. You learned a lot about these final days of his life when you went down there still 68, 67, 68 years later. I absolutely did, Alex. And one of the most poignant sites that we visited when we were in Mississippi was a place that was actually almost erased from history, the place where it's believed that Emmett Till was killed. It's simply referred to as the barn. This is such a beautiful scene, the cypress in the water like it is. It's peaceful, it's stunning really. Now we don't know if these were here back in 1955, but it is so strange, odd to juxtapose this scene with the barn. The barn. The barn is where it's believed Emmett Till was killed in 1955. He was just 14. Like scores of Chicago children before him and since, Emmett had come to Mississippi to visit family. I woke up and saw these two white men standing at the foot of my bed. Half-brothers J.W. Milam and Roy Bryant were those two men looking for Emmett. He'd whistled at Roy Bryant's wife Carolyn days before. And at 2 a.m. that morning, the men were determined to find who they called the boy from Chicago. It was pure hell. I mean, it, it was just, it was horrible. Emmett was kidnapped from his Uncle Mo's Wright's home in Money, Mississippi. Milam and Bryant drove 33 miles to this barn a few miles outside Drew in neighboring Sunflower County. In Sunflower County, they drive to the Clint Sheridan Plantation, which is managed by Leslie Milam, J.W. Milam's brother, Roy Bryant's half-brother. 18-year-old Willie Reed saw all of them, Milam, Bryant, Emmett Till, and others, as they drove up this road toward the barn. You see three black people on this road. You see a young one. And then you see two old ones, and these two, two white men, and they go into that barn. Not long after, Willie Reed heard more. I heard this beat going on. I heard this beat, but I kept on going, so I told this man, this man, you know, I'm way up there, uh, beating somebody. He uh, walked by the barn where they had taken Emmett, and that's when he heard the cries for help, the moans, the, the what he called licks. And you got to say, uh, yeah, look at this old guy, he's uh, 14 years old, and then he down and visited his grandfather from Chicago, and this happened to him. And they say he was that a white lady, and that wasn't up to kill nobody about you know? Everyone knew, and it was no secret that the murder happened here. Mm -hmm. Like, it was in newspaper articles. But for about 50 years, the barn was erased from the Emmett Till story. Milam and Bryant were tried and acquitted of Emmett's murder. Four months later, they admitted to killing Emmett Till in an article for Look magazine. But in that confession, they said they acted alone and they failed to mention the barn at all. A big reason this barn was forgotten for so many years is because when they told the story in Look magazine, Look required signatures from everyone who was involved. And of course, they could only get signatures from the two men who had already been tried and were no longer in legal jeopardy. And so they had to eliminate everyone else from the story. Which would have included J.W. Milam's brother, Leslie, who ran the plantation, the two black men Willie Reed saw on the back of the truck with Emmett, and the white men Willie Reed saw with Milam and Bryant in the cab of the truck. We believe that there were at least seven people involved. And so to eliminate all the other people, they had to move the murder site over to Tallahatchie County. Because if this barn was involved, it took lots of people. He said this was the location where he saw, where he heard the screams. Dentist Jeff Andrews brought the barn in 1992, unaware of its history. I, until I purchased the property, I really didn't know anything about him until. Wow. I mean, that's, you know, I, I, I guess that's a local thing to where people just didn't, don't talk about it. I never knew about it growing up as a child, and I've been here all my life. Jeff Andrews may not have heard about what happened here, but Gloria Carter Dickerson did. And when we would pass this barn, my mama would tell us that's why Emmett Till was killed. Gloria Carter Dickerson's mother, Mae Bertha Carter, was a civil rights activist. 
She was the first African-American to enroll her children, including Gloria, into the then segregated schools in Drew. My mom told us before she died, fighting for justice is a lifelong journey. That journey has brought Gloria to this barn and to Emmett Till. She founded the Emmett Till Academy in Drew to teach this generation about what happened here and what Emmett meant to the civil rights movement. And we have a reminder, you can stream our documentary series, The Lost Story of Emmett Till, on our website, NBCChicago.com, to learn more. You can also stream it on Roku and Fire TV. I'm always amazed how much is still being uncovered. It's amazing. Decades and decades later. Right. There's a lot still there. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that to us, Mary. Absolutely.